everyone, welcome back. Today, we got to reset some of these isopod bins. Some of these should have been done months ago. Most of them can last about six months. Some can go up to about a year with adding some new leaf litter components. But some of them, I just haven't had a chance. So today, we're taking care of some isopod bins. And we're gonna talk a little bit more, a bit more in detail, about my substrate mix. So my components, my natural nature and components have been soaking for 48 hours. So we've got a lot of the green moss. It's been soaking. I've been using the lid for this one and this one lid goes down and then I push weight on it. So you guys have heard me talk about where I use the double Rubbermaid type components and stuff to, to be able to submerge the product. So I'm going to take all my moss, pieces of bark. I'm just trying to separate. I put the moss in at the top to kind of use it as a way to push all the other stuff down. And then there you can see all that nice, beautiful white rot wood ready to go. And the nice thing, the nice thing about it is this stuff is just an absolute sponge. So we're going to go and mix that in with some nice organic black soil. And we've got all the components we're going to need to set up some isopods. All right, so now we're in the basement. We're going to get started. So we've got our black earth mist. Now, obviously, I always have terrarium mix ready to go all the time. We're just going to be adding to it. The basically uh, the components I use is a nice good quality organic black soil, ideally without perlite, which is the little white dots, because uh, they offer really nothing to the animal. But uh, I like using things like worm castings or sea soil or any of those type of products have enriched products in them that are beneficial to the environment. Because I'm not using them just for isopods, I'm using this for all the vivaria builds and everything and components I build as well. Okay, then for the other soil components, as I showed you already, we got the white rot wood, super spongy, ready to go. We've got lots of natural green moss. We've got lots of naturally harvested oak leaf litter. And then for our calcium sources, depending on species, I generally use cuttle bones, calcium carbonate, which is a reptile substrate. And depending on if I have some cubaris or things like that, I often add different calciferous rocks like uh, pieces of dead coral or uh, limestone. So let's go ahead and get some mix made up so we can get started on uh, resetting some of the isopods. Now, I know everybody wants to know a recipe. There is no recipe. We're dealing with nature. Nature is chaotic. Nature is not planned. Nature is not smooth and perfect all the time. So start off with a good organic mix. Add a fair component of white rot wood. The, the moss will add some components if a species needs slightly more humidity, say like a Marilunella or a Cubaris. If it's something like a, porc a Porcilio, then we won't add as much moss. We'll just use that as the moisture sink in a corner. And then the leaf layer. We're going to add all those components together and get a nice, loamy, loose mix that will retain a lot of moisture. All right. Well, this will give you an idea of what the, the final component looks like. You know, nice, loamy, loose. You can add all sorts of other products. And I just didn't have a lot of uh, charcoal that was all broken down. It just adds to sweeten the mix and make the soil last a little bit longer. But uh, I didn't really put any of that in this one here. Honestly, this is that black earth product lots of this white wood uh, rot which is that spongy material and I didn't show you me go ahead and building it because you know it's pretty simple just to add three components but I added that entire five gallon pail or three and a half gallon pail of white rot wood to what you saw here and it's all been mixed in very very well and then I added in probably about a third of that box of the leaf litter crumbling it all up so I've got a nice moisture retentive mix now, normally, if I was doing just isopods, which is what the plan is, I would also be adding that calcium carbonate uh, powder, or sorry, uh, sand, to this mix. Uh, but because I use this tub for making soil for everything, I will add that into the tubs when I make the tubs. And then we didn't use any moss yet. We can go and add moss in the same way as if we need it, depending on which species we're going to go and reset first. That gives you guys an idea. Nice, super forest floor, moisture retentive media. This is going to be just absolutely perfect for isopods. So here's one of the perfect ones that's in desperate need. You can see there's next to no moss left whatsoever. And there's really nothing left other than frass. All the substrate has been converted to isopod frass. But because there's no real contaminants in this one, we can reuse the woods. We can reuse any of the components that are in here that are still good. And we will also transfer a little bit of this product over to establish the new bin a little bit quicker. So there's our new bin ready to go. As I mentioned, we've got to add the calcium carbonate to it. We've got to add some moss. And then the, the tedious part comes 
of us having to go through this bit by bit to sift out and find every individual isopod the best we can to transfer them over. So there's my light dusting of uh, calcium carbonate. It may look like a lot, but uh, if, once it's all mixed in with the soil, you don't really even see it at all. And the nice benefit of it is, is that it also, because it's calcium, and it's a carbonate, it'll also help to uh, stabilize the chemistry of the soil so the soil will not become too alkaline, too, or I'm sorry, too acidified uh, too quickly. So this helps balance it, maintains a stable pH, which is beneficial for all the critters. So I think I'm going to add just a little bit more substrate. We'll get some moss in there, and then we'll start transferring everybody over. All right, about 15, 20 minutes later, and sifting through the, the substrate with a fine tooth comb, we now have one of the new iso one of the isopod cultures completely reset. This one happens to be the Armadillidium klugii Montenegro, and they are going to do just fine. You can see them already in there enjoying the moss. We already introduced, you can see all the springtails and some of that stuff that came with some of their components. So, overall, mission accomplished. And then all the extra substrate, as I've mentioned before, I do not want to be the one to introduce non-native species to my environment. All the extra substrate, which is all components of frass and isopod waste products, it's all beneficial products, but uh, for now, all that stuff's been put into a bag and put into the freezer. And now let's get on to the next one. All right, here's the next one up. These are the my daughter's Ursilio Lavis Orange. And as you can see, same situation as the other one. There's very, very little. And we've got about, you know, two and a half inches of substrate, deep substrate, that is pretty much just frass. So this one we're going to reset completely. So here's the old bin. And here's the new bin with just the new substrate added, all that rich organic matter added in there. Again, we're just going to transfer over the existing pieces as long as the pieces are structurally still there. I think we're going to, because this is a Persilio species, but not a very demanding species, we're going to put a nice big clump of moss right here. There we go. You know, just a little piece of forest moss. Now you can see most of the cuddle bones have been spent, so we're going to replace them. But this cuddle bone that's still got some structure to it, but we can just crumble it up and we can add it into the substrate mix. Same with any of the other ones. Yeah, they're all good components, still for adding calcium. Same sort of thing here. And then we're going to go and just transfer any of this remaining product, like I mentioned I did before, all this leaf litter and so forth. The components are on the top that are still good. We'll just transfer them over. That also contain a lot of those beneficial products that'll help kind of jumpstart the, the new substrate. And the next step is now we do the tedious step where we got to go and collect all the isopods one by one. So let's get that taken care of and we'll see you in a sec. Alright, and there's another one set up. Now I did, I did obviously miss one step, you guys saw it, and if anybody knows what it was, stop here and go make a mention in the comment. What did I forget to do before I started transferring over isopods? Pause for a second. Okay, if you didn't get that, what I forgot to do is I forgot to add my calcium carbonate to the substrate. So I have gone and kind of stirred it up. That's what might look a little bit different. I didn't, I didn't do it on camera, but I went and stirred it up and uh, added that component. Now you can see that, that we've got all that nice organic substrate. We've got our moss, we've got our cork bark pieces. We've added several new pieces of cuddle bone and some leaf litter. This is exceptional, and this is going to last probably for another good six months now that it's been completely reset. Priscilio Labus Orange. Okay, the next one up is probably without question my species that requires the driest conditions. For me, this is a species that I've uh, been on the cusp of losing several times. It's actually my one of my first three original isopods that I ever started with. I started with this particular species, Priscilio Hassii high yellow. I started with Hoffman Sagai, and I started with Priscilla Ornatus. But Ornatus yellow was another one similar to this one that I lost from keeping it too wet. So this one here is, no, the enclosure is not too, too bad, but we're still going to switch it over. The colony's rebounding really, really well right now, but it still is predominantly just frass product. So we're going to go and reset it. So I've got my new substrate mix. I've got my moss 
But because this is a species that likes a lot more airy, a lot drier, we're gonna switch all these components over as well. But I also got some nice lichen covered branches. I'm gonna add a bunch of that into the mix as well. So let's get to it. How's that look? Then we're still gonna go ahead and add all these components that they already have in place. Look at all those beautiful isopods. Now one thing I did notice in here is the color density or these used to be, maybe it's just my perception, but they don't seem as vibrant yellow as they used to be. Now I wonder if that's more than likely gonna be a dietary component. As it's a porcelio species, it's a little bit higher demanding in regards to its protein content. It doesn't really uh, consume a lot of vegetation. As you can see, most of the leaves in here, they stay pretty much the same. But I don't know, food for thought. All right, let's go ahead and go through all this and get them transferred over. There they are out cruising around, exploring their new environment. You know, if we look at the old one, oh, I still missed one. Ugh. What you don't see in the video is that going through these bins, each bin is like 45 minutes. They take absolutely forever to go through because they don't want to miss any. But transferring over and they're going to do just great. Okay, the next one. It's another one. This one's absolutely one of my absolute favorites. We've done a separate video on this one particularly. Put the link up in the corner. This one is my Armadillidium Magic Potion. This is the Japanese form, allegedly. And uh, they came from Europe. So we've gone and got the substrate. We've added the calcium carbonate. We've gone and added some moss, some branches with some lichens. As it's an armalidium species, it's gonna like eating a lot of that vegetation matter. So we know that the substrate's just loaded with it, as well as all the leaf litter, the moss, and then we've added some new, brand new cuddle bones. And then we're gonna go and transfer everything over again. There's a nice, healthy inoculation of springtails into the mix some of the adults there we go and now we got to go through it and catch all the rest yep another tedious process but it's taken care of thank god make sure we saved all my favorite ones the beautiful magic potion i don't know why it's a very common species it's a very easy species to keep i just love it for its absolute extreme variability in regards to all the different spotting and so forth Come on, little guy, you can do it. So I think you guys get an idea. We've done about six or so species. They're all pretty much the same. Just depends on how dry you like it, how wet you like it. But the soil components are pretty much the same so far. We haven't redone any, any Marilunella or any Cubaris in this, in this reset video, but uh, you guys get the plan. If it was Mar Marilunella or Cubaris, you'd want a lot more moisture content. Marilunella need more ventilation, but Overall, it's been a good day. So, hope you guys have enjoyed this uh, reset video as much as I enjoyed doing it. Shame I didn't get to take you on the journey. This video could have been three hours, four hours long for all the time of me sitting there tediously picking them out out of the soil. But, again, as always, my friends, thank you kindly for watching, and we'll see you next time. Take care.